Good evening. I'd like to start by congratulating and saying good luck to all the nominees and finalists and the teams in the state playoffs. Every high school team I've covered has been a pleasure, win or lose, because of the people involved, uh, from athletics directors to coaches and players who are cooperative and respectful, f respectful of my work. Many of you deserve credit for going above and beyond for promoting your schools and players and student athletes, especially Amanda Amon, D Dorn Wilcox, and Jeremy Klingensmith. It's probably hard for you to believe, but years ago I played sports myself when I was a kid, so I realized the importance sports can have on a teenager's life. As someone who played and helped coach and covered sports for decades, I've seen long -term, the long-term impact and benefits that playing sports can have. There's the obvious friendships and camaraderie that developed, which can lead to teamwork, effort, and then winning, which becomes infectious throughout the school and community. It all starts with parents, family, and coaching. When you have instructors and mentors such as Jonathan Clark and Scott Neal and Nana Perez, to name a few, it's no surprise that progress and success follow. This year I've been fortunate to witness excitement and success with a handful of teams, in particular Malk basketball, the boys basketball team, who's 22 wins and a run at the state championship uh, without any seniors in their starting five was unforgettable. The palpable excitement and, and fun that they sparked with their spectacular play by Aiden Honaker and Josh Neal and Lucas Leslie, among others, was really extraordinary. And I saw up close how the Patriots could instantly demoralize and bury an opponent, opponent within a few minutes. That was the case many times also with the Mojave girls soccer team, especially when Skylar and Raya and Andrea started scoring. There was no stopping them until the second round of the playoffs. And although the Mojave boys soccer team didn't win as many as they'd hoped, they have talent to burn, especially Logan Burgess, whose feet ought to be illegal. Corey Heath's girls basketball team had a solid season despite some challenging circumstances, but Alyssa and Kylie and Hannah would overcome them. You have Ed's swimming team, which had a special season qualifying for state and Madeline setting school records. Of course, there's the River Valley softball team, which has led me to Phoenix, where I am boring you on video instead of speaking live in person. By now, almost everyone has heard of Chloe Spitzer. Time and again, she has proven to be on another level. I could go on about Karina's home runs and the clutch hitting of everyone in the Lady Dust Devils lineup, but they wouldn't be undefeated if it weren't for coaches Michael and Kathleen Giannamore, who have established a great culture on the field and off. The players' energy, focus, and confidence in their dugout is really something to behold. There are so many dedicated and caring coaches to acknowledge. If I tried to name them all, you would pull the plug or fall asleep. There's also the River Valley baseball team, I might add, which has quietly earned a 14-4 and record and a playoff berth. You'd be hard-pressed to find anybody who loves coaching baseball more than Billy Fergoso. It's been a privilege to cover your games and write about your teams. Thank you. <clears throat>